Hello YouTube, take a deep breath like I just did. Let it out. We're going to play with epoxy this Sunday here in the video. Uh, this had a brass barrel on me and I was showcasing while well, I used on another project. See, I got that tape tucked in there. That's what I did, so I put the epoxy in there, okay? You see how the bulb is made? I think you can see it. Look right. See? I had my tape all tucked in there. And then I, before it completely hardened, um, so it's so hard quick, I got the five minutes stuff. I cut it out with my exacto knife blades. Boy, it's nice to have different handles. You just grab whatever you want, you know, change the blade. Okay, we had tape wrapped around here to this diameter. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to wrap, we're going down, we want this to come down and extend about like that. Let's say right there. We're going to wrap a bunch of tape around her again to extend that. And then we're going to kind of rough this up and put some more epoxy in there. It's kind of hard to do. The stuff is runny. So what I do is I mix a little extra harder with it. And boy, you better hurry up and go. <laughs> you better hurry up and go. <clears throat> you got to really sit there and play with it. It not want to drip off. But but it, it'll go. You just got to play with it. And I got my little stick. I'll show you that. I'm going to tell myself it's Sunday. We can take longer. I had some leftover, okay? Now, let me take this and hit it. This stuff gets hard. It does. Let, let me let me tap on it with something. Okay, here's the sound of the bulb. Okay, get in frame. Here's the metal. Okay, here's the boxy. 24 hours. And this stuff gets really hard. I really like using it. And I know I've said it enough times. Somebody's going to ask me. Our special, 10 bucks a piece. Well, I overuse the hardener so much that I've got a bottle of that what's left in it. So we're just going to continue to use it up uh, over time. I don't think we'll ever really run out of hardener. But let's go ahead and do that. We'll get the tape around there. Oh, let's show you this in detail. See if you can see this on camera. See how, see how that side's fatter? Can we get focus? And this side's thinner. My little spatula tool. These are sparklers you give the kids. They got that nice rainbow wrapped gold foiled. And I'd save them after the 4th of July and uh, chopsticks. Get free chopsticks. Skewers. You'll see them in the grocery store for your shish kebab. You know, get stuff like that. Make little pokey tools for doing stuff like this. And it scrapes right off. And this knife is so good. You can actually see it here. Let me show you. Another. See that? The rounded part? You can scrape that epoxy back off. Don't that look nice? That stonewash look. I did not want the shiny. I still get a kick out. These screws were so crooked. And this knife. I don't know if you can tell it. All of them were crooked. Oh, the battery symbol's flashing. Well, let's change the battery because we're talking too long. And let's get some epoxy on that. Okay, what a nasty mess. I thought I'd made too much. I put extra hardener in it. There's a trick to this. You, you, you just got to practice it. I mean, it's running all over. I mean, it's running like syrup. You, you warmed up the syrup out of the refrigerator. You know, you know what's in the fridge? It's a little bit thicker. So it's it's like you. Kind of like that. It's not like water. But uh, the trick is to get it in there. Okay. And keep spinning it. I want you guys those fishing rods. You know, when you put your, uh, you know what I mean, your ring thing that feeds your line. The round metal rings and he'll spin it on his lathe like one revolution per second and that's what I did 1001 one, one, and I spun that as it was dripping you'd see it dripping on the bottom so you turn it to the top then when it starts setting okay wet your fingers and start shaping it and this this stuff is already stiff I mean 
It's been what, 10 minutes? So I put it, and you'll feel it warm on your fingers. It's, it's, it's getting there. It'll take 24 hours to cure. Okay, we're going to teach you how to clean your palate and how to sharpen your scraper. I want to see people making these. It's just a shame. This is a good idea. I don't care how much money or how many views I get. I, I like to share that stuff. Make your scraper like this a utility blade. I've got the video on it. Find any disposable lighter that's at least like one inch wide like this. Get a big one. So we're going to show you how to maintain that and how to clean your little plexiglass palette. So we'll be right back. Not much sanding to do. I mean, it ain't going to look perfect. It's going to look like it was carved. I mean, it's not going to be perfectly smooth. I have little pit holes up here where I slop some extra epoxy where I thought they were. So, you can always add some kind of fill if you want to be super, super smooth. But that's that ball filled with that uh, countertop epoxy which never cured, believe me. I took this part, and you can still move that blue straw in there. That stuff never did cure all the way. It's because, I think it's because it couldn't get no air to it inside of there. Okay, enough yakking on that. We'll come back and we'll show you how we're going to clean this. I should be able to do it without using a tripod, but I think I'll get out the tripod. Okay, sure it's quiet in the neighborhood. All you hear is my fan over there. No dogs barking. It's what? Uh, 10 in the morning. It'll kick in. With all these heat, it's supposed to hit 90 plus. I did, I did show that to you, right? I don't like the serrations on, on this, okay? To me, it's on the wrong side. See this? It seems like it'd be more chisel action that way. See how the serrations make? Make do with what you got, no complain. A lot of times you're scraping this way. You're going to pox you off there. You just you get kind of an idea how you do this. Don't don't wait till it's super hard the next day. It's still gooey. This is stuff we just used. I want you to see what it looks like. I think you get the idea right. If you're careful, and I've had to stick sharpen like this for who knows how many projects. Take your time. You don't want to, I spent about a half hour sharpening this stick the way I wanted it. Oh, maybe not that, but I you know, I bet it could have been. You know, you're making your own little tool. Don't worry about getting on your fingers. Use some acetone. This epoxy will come off. It ain't real toxic. Just don't stick your finger in your mouth or in your eyes if you're not wearing gloves. Of course, you all know how you scrape. The same way with these, you just want to scrape the varnish off a knife handle. I want to see people make these scrapers. You don't know what you're missing. Because you could sharpen this for a long time. Unless you absolutely ruin this blade, you'll have a scraper for the rest of your life. Especially if your hobby is you took it to a car to get off a gasket or something. See that? That's not too bad. I like that. It's fatter over here. It's kind of like a knife wedge shape. You can just dab it in. Anyway. Okay, let's go on to this one. We're already two minutes of that. Do not do this. Don't sit there and do that. See where my finger is? And I like to kind of seesaw like with a... Oh, one side's better. That dirty side, clean side up. I figured it out by sharpening. I practiced this video before I made, was gonna make it. Get your fingers out of the way. You, all of a sudden it lets loose. Well, where are you at? See that? Fill it right up. Look at that. Most epoxy do not stick to plastic. They will stick, yeah, a certain amount of strength, but they're not going to melt and bond to it. Now, they make a glue I want to try someday. It's a liquid glue, 
It's like for your water pipe, you're getting mixed up. PVC pipe, not PCB. See that? Okay, let me clean this off with some acetone. We're coming back and show you how to sharpen this thing. Look, look at that. You know, if you get this stuff just right, you shouldn't get on your fingers. That that's still got rust. See it? Let me clean up my fingertips and clean up my blade with some acetone. And I don't even like getting that on my skin. Okay, update on the project. We went ahead and peeled the tape off. Ain't that slick? I wish I wouldn't have got so much up on there. I had that shape so good. But let's put my little vise over here. Spin that around. Oh, the viewer suggests that. See the bow rings? See that? Keep the handle that way. Swing it out of the way. If you don't have one of these, buy one of these vices if you do hobby work. Man, I just sell a lot of Harbor Freight tools, don't I? They ought to give me, I ought to work for Harbor Freight. You know, if my health was better, I would have applied for a job and been working there a long time ago. Okay, let's show us our acetone. This was pure P-U-R water bottle with the flip top stopper. When you're done getting your acetone, here's the lid which I dip it in. You can tell by how stained it is. I'll just pour some in there. And then your double fire safety proofed aluminum bottle. I don't know if it's double walled or not, but good luck finding one of these. So long I've had it, I bet you can't even see it. Barely see where the lettering was. P U R. Nice container. I've had it a long time. We're going to play with that stuff next. That'll keep you watching. Okay, to sharpen this, you've cleaned your palate. I said I took acetone of this. Everything's clean. And now, now it's time to put to touch up the edge on this. Okay, this is what I do. Give me a piece of twelve hundred grit, thousand grit, and I'll clean her down. And I'll go out here and I'll do this edge. And if you can see it on camera, there's a micro edge on here. We get real close to the viewfinder here. There's a little micro edge. Well, this came out just right. Here's the angle you will be sharpening it. See how that's automatically got a... What is that? If, if, if that's like 45, we know that's 90. 45. What, 22 and a half is about... What is that, about 17 to 20, like a chef's knife? This is how I do it. It's just so simple. I've sharpened pocket knife for years with sandpaper because I never could use a whetstone. Just draw it across the sandpaper. I mean, you go back and forth and hone it. You got an angle. I said, oh, take your corners off. Don't have a corner on these. It's going to gouge for the scratch in the tabletop or something you're working on. Wood. You're trying to get the varnish, and you'll never get it out. Get, get, get rid of them corners. Do it every time you're playing with it. Just, just, just get rid of them. Do not let nothing be sharpened out there. That works pretty good. Now, I found, for some reason... One side scrapes better than the other. Don't do that, people, with your fingers. Can you see the micro edge? You see that needy bitty? That's what comes on a razor blade. That's why your disposable razors get dull and you throw them away. Or anyway, the, the little micro edge. When it's gone, it's gone. You ain't gonna duplicate. Well, these you can. I always sharpen these when I'm really poor. Okay, onto the plastic. Uh, like I said, don't go near your fingers. Let, let, here, let's turn it over. I said, if you can see your X really good, you're on the back side. See? Let, let's see. Let's see. This will make a line. See that? 
That's why you don't want your edge sharp. You don't want you don't want that digging in there on your work. Let's see if we can take this out. Then beware your fingers. Watch your fingers. One way scrapes better. Oh boy, it's this way, like I said. So I'm going to leave them dirt spots. Now remember, you can back scrape. Let's take our eggs out and show you. So I'm proving you, like them commercials. You ever seen a commercial that got a rusty old toilet or a bathtub in the junkyard? That's fake. You can wipe that stuff off with your finger. You know this ain't fake. That's Sharpie marker. You know, if you sat here long enough and scrape like the machines do on an old cast iron surface plate, and they have metal scrapers, they'll get it perfectly level. <sighs> Reach around there and blow. So there you go. There's your tutorial. So don't be going towards your fingers. Just take those. Stay, stay away. You will have this for the longest time. Here's your other tip. Take take this off and always bevel it. It's beveled over. So when you scrape your gunk off, and do this side too. You don't have to do the bottom. But keep it squared off. And you will have this little pallet for a long time. I've used them for car, uh, 33 and 3rd record albums. Take the center hole and drill it out bigger with a step drill. If you can put your thumb through like the artist does with the pallet. Like, Bondo? Oh, man. I used to take them and put a hole out towards the edge of the album and use them for Bondo, records that you don't like. I'm not going to mention a group of somebody get mad. You ruined a record. That's my favorite artist. There you go. There's enough of that. That's it. If you can see that nice and clear, you're on the wrong side. You want to work on this side. Look at this thing. I want to show you how much wear it has. Look at that. And it's still a pretty nice flat surface. You can take a ruler straight edge and put on here as much as great and, and it is going to still be pretty level. I do that for a reason because not all tables and stuff you might want to sand something use this as a little mini surface plate you know like like I had this paper right here you might want to sand something that's level. I don't know what to use. Uh, I have nothing for an example. So, I can't tell you. Say, say this is a metal dowel. See the bottom of this? See, get the camera. You, you got a surface plate. Somewhat. Backyard machining. See, you know what I mean. Okay, let's go on to playing with that epoxy over there. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Then that's about it for today. What, this is eight minutes playing with us. Okay, let's play with this stuff. That's how you learn how what to do with it. Just play. I, mean, I swore this way to pound is only 114 grams for you gram people. For that sucker's heavy. They did a nice tube to reuse. This this could work for little metal rods left over raising rod. Don't throw away stuff like this. You can cut this tube down, you're done to this short if you want. You can make a waterproof matchbox out of it. Okay, let's let's play with this stuff. I'm probably gonna have to use just our pocket knife. Let, let's cut some off. We do not have nothing to cut it off with. And we just acetone this. See? See how we are? I wonder what that number means. We want to see how much working time we have. Don't be in an all hellfire hurry to cut. Old guys are saying hellfire hurry to cut through stuff. Never mind. 
like me going around a tube, tube or a pipe with a hacksaw. And somebody criticized me. That ain't the way you cut that. Yeah, whatever. Whatever to you two. Hey, can we save this? Waste well, not, what not, right? Wouldn't, wouldn't you do that? Wouldn't you do that? You would too, wouldn't you? Say yes, you would. Come on, I want to hear everybody one time. I can hear it in my head. You ever do that? You ever yell at the guy in the video? Don't do that! Don't do that! You forgot that boulder! Oh, I forgot that boulder. I'm glad you guys are yelling at me. Okay, should we read some instructions on here? No, real men don't read. Break it, mix it, and apply it. Uh, it's all inside the working time. You don't have a whole lot. It says work time three minutes, so we're, we're, we're just going to guess. So I take that off or let it dry and leave it alone. Leave it alone. You know what I'm going to make out of this? It's going to be a little round ball. And then it's going to be used like to make another knobby screwdriver or something. The start of it. This is live on camera, people. It's going to be a long video. If you don't want to watch one of the long videos, you sure don't want to watch the 30 minute Sunday in the shop. Okay, let's, let's get down. Let's get you down a little further. Whoa, don't do that. Phew. You know that Disney ride where they take you up on that elevator? And then it... Here, let's do it. You ready? We're going to fall. Let's do it real fast. You ready? Bam! You know, not as a kid, if I had a camera like this, oh, I would not even go there. I'd be spying on people. Remember now, when, you, when your fingers start getting too sticky, don't do it while you're mixing it. Once you start forming spit on your fingers, don't be afraid to spit on the table or something get on your fingers. Oh boy. Oh man. Imagine me doing a great big half of that for a knife handle. Like I said, they'll probably go around a wooden doll. No, I'm not any good at doing this. I make goulash, and Italian people will probably scream at you. You know when you make your pasta like good, and you just go and dump your jar, jar of sauce in the kettle you make good, then you throw the ground beef in there, instead of making your sauce separate. And you'll notice, the meat always goes to the bottom of the kettle. <laughs> That's stuff you think of. Your ground beef ends up in the bottom. In fact, I just made some a while back. And what is it? Salentini? I can't tell you. It's squigglies. It's it's not rotini, like spiral, like an auger. It's rounded pasta and it's swirled. That stuff is so gooey and chewy. It's my favorite pasta. I'm not going to spit on my fingers on camera and do that. That's gross. What do you think? Here, should we flatten it out again? I feel it getting warm. Here, let, let, let's tighten my gloves up. See how they're loose? Get, get in here. Just, just get, get, get a handful. I showed the camera. Get in there. They, get, get in there. Pull them babies. Get, get in there. I mean, get, get right up in there. Let me do this off camera. Just get in there and just. Pull them something. Don't be careful. You'll rip them cheap gloves. I don't know where these came from. They were given to me. Donated. A little better. I think we're getting more working time than what we think. We need to look at the camera. I'll go back and look. Later you can know what the time or what it was. I said I decided to get the concrete stuff. Because it was porous to paint. And I've had trouble, like I said, I've had trouble like the, the other stuff that it drives such a hard sheen. And it's got that damn, dang, 
skim coat. You know, the reservoir is shiny. You got to sand off. And this was like $5 cheaper. It's like, what, $11? And so on, so it's $15. They make all kinds of fixtures, swimming pools, fix whatever. Does it start to look like concrete? What do you think? I said, don't, don't be afraid to mix it. If you got this much time to play with this stuff, I feel like I'm in kindergarten play. Y'all, anybody old as me, remember the clay and the sticks? You're brown and you're gray? You know, they were like, yay long. And one inch, you remember the clay and the stick? Oh, man, when I was a kid, you would not believe the stuff I made out of that. And I don't know if you could bake that stuff. Is this getting warm? Uh, it's not that warm. Okay, you want to know how to make a ball? We're going to show you. you. Can you see what I'm doing? Here, let's, you see down in there? This is how you make natural clay marbles. Now, as a kid, I had some. They were rusted from the ground. Okay. And then you do it. Here's a bigger on And then you get it on the table, okay? You're going to pick up dirt, which I just did. Make sure your table's on. And that's when you just have some water. Here, instead of spit, let's use some water. Excuse the bumping in the... If you practice this, yeah, I had a couple there as a kid. They go way back. Uh, white clay marbles. And they'd have rust from finding them in the dirt. I had a couple from where I lived when I was a little kid. I had some really old glass marbles. What's neat when you're metal detecting, you're digging a hole to dig up some little Hot Wheels car or something. You, if you get a bonus, you get a marble. You see, see how we're doing it? Look. And study it. You're not going to get it perfectly round. Here, let's get some water on us. Can't go around like this and look at it and then turn it. You know the the best best ones is the packet. See how I'm pushing it together? We're gonna start packing this together. It's still not hardening yet. Hey, might be a long video this time, but you know what? We're gonna know how long this takes. I think I'm gonna like this concrete stuff. If you're into stuff like me, it's worth trying. I mean, you'll find it on Amazon. You'll find it anywhere. The problem with this is you're gonna get an old oval football shape if you don't know what you're doing. You gotta constantly turn it. But after a while, you'll start feeling it. See it getting better. Here, let, let, let's move the camera a little bit here. You'll start getting better at it. See what you're learning this time? You, you'll actually start telling it. See, it's egg shape. Here, go over and push down on a little bit. Give a little roll. Take your time, because trying to sand this in a ball, good luck. You no, know, the water will not hurt this stuff. JB Weld, you know, the worst stuff I use was that PC whatever, the two little containers. It's good for what you use it with, but it takes forever to cure. It's good for slopping on something. Say you want to coat a old gas tank for a lawnmower or something. It's the PC whatever. It could be the same company. PC said whatever. But not for molding. If you want to mold the stuff, that's what you want. Now, if you put JV Weld and you're careful, and I've done it, and you take, see that flat spot? Can you see it? Sure you can. Now it's come down to where you're not going to be able to roll it anymore. 
But you see how I compacted that ball back together a little bit more? Let's just, just put it in my hand again. Let me go off camera. I'll be right back. Roll that thing. And you roll it, in the, you roll it between the here. You roll it between the palms in your hand. You're just learning a wealth of information today. We're 11 minutes into this. There you go. We're going to end the video with that. It's playing long enough. Thanks for watching. And look for any pictures I might snap of what I'm doing. Or like the screwdriver. That will be in another video after I get it made. So thank you for watching. We're gone. Not too bad, huh? Oh, let me work on a little bit before. And I'm not looking at the clock necessarily. But we're 12 minutes into playing with this. And this stuff ain't rock hard yet. So, three minutes work time makes you wonder, huh? Did the water slow it down? Because we cooled it? We'll never know, will we? See, you can look at the timer and see how long I played with it. So, that's a lot of working time. Uh, don't grab your camera like this. We'll figure it out. We want to keep our gloves on. Nah, we'll take our gloves off. It's not that toxic. So... Thanks for watching. We're gone. We're out of here.